this this haircut shit, man. Not bad. It's all right. It's easy, isn't it? It's all right. Made a bit of a mistake there, but it'll grow back. It's all right. It's all right. Memphis Massacre 2 is the sequel to Memphis Massacre that came out in 2018. And uh, now we have the follow-up came out way back earlier on in 2020. I keep doing this where I'm just like really late to releases, but I had, I had kind of hit a point where, uh, where, where, where I don't care. Generally, my reviews are pretty much on time, but I think sometimes it's fine to just get one later on because uh, especially with a project like this, where I just kind of wonder why it didn't really get that much exposure, especially from like trap lovers, trap fans. There are a lot of like music nerds that slowly started to like familiarize themselves with the genre and start calling themselves fans. But honestly, not to like be elitist or whatever, but they've kind of stopped at like Playboy Carti, Travis Scott, and you know, not really gone any further. Not to discredit any of those, because you guys probably know by now that I love, you know, Rodeo, I love uh, self titled from Playboy Carti, even though, you know, projects I didn't ne necessarily like to begin with over time have grown on me. But like, I, th I, I feel like you're missing out if you don't dig any further into the genre than that, because there are so many artists like Duke Deuce that bring so much to the table that I think would uh, reach a lot of fans. Kind of similarly to uh, Key Glock's Yellow Tape, which I've found to be one of my favorite hip hop projects of the year so far, which isn't something I necessarily expected to begin with, but you know, it is how it is. Duke Do So brings something completely different to the table. This guy is incredibly goofy and animated. It's almost like he's not really taking himself seriously or even like his music seriously at times. Uh, not to say that's like a, an attack at him as an artist, but you know, some of these tracks really do just like read to me as just like almost parody levels of like trap songs. Not in a little dicky way in, you know, in any kind of stretch at all because Lil Dicky you know just isn't funny at all but uh, there's something about the way this guy flows on tracks that's just kind of funny to me I kind of feel like he's just constantly like on the verge of telling a joke just the way he flows it was more prevalent I would say on Memphis Massacre 1 which I do think is slightly better than this one but um, you do get it on Crunk Ain't Dead, which was like one of his breakout singles. Which honestly, I wouldn't even say is his best track, but I'm glad it is something that I, you know, managed to cross a lot of people. Although the version on the album is more of a posse cut with a few other features, which uh, probably isn't as strong as the original version that you may already know. But it still brings, you know, a lot of energy, a lot of hypeness. And uh, the hook is just too hard to deny. Crunky dead, crunky dead, crunky dead, huh? BHZ probably providing me personally with slightly more more enjoyment than Crunky Dead, just with how hard hitting it is, just incredibly catchy in the way that Duke Deuce comes on the track with his flows. He's really switching them up all the time in this album. He, I love the way he just bounces around like a hyper kid. And while the lyrics aren't exactly something you're going to be going back to and being like, whoa, but I at least appreciate that, you know, he's not dropping like these awful one-liners every so often that even like some of the mainstream artists in this genre are doing. Um, it's kind of perplexing sometimes at how bad some lyricists in this style can be. And uh, it kind of sours your expectations of lyrics, I think, in this genre, because you think that everyone's going to be dropping terrible lines. But I don't think Juke Deuce is really bad in that sense. I mean, Big Dog that closes out the album, sure, the singing that he goes for here isn't very on point. But um, I at least appreciate the introspective lyrics that he's going through here, just talking about how he feels like he's lucky to be here. He's not entirely sure how he could still be here. Just sort of looking at the lifestyle that he may have kind of put himself into or the situations that he's put himself into and kind of reflecting on whether or not he may have made mistakes. And now he's just thinking, man, to be alive still is a blessing. Not necessarily something you've like never heard before, but it did make me look 
at his place in the trap genre a little bit and to make me think, you know what? If he is currently working on something, which he tweeted about actually um, saying that there's something else on the way, it might bring us something slightly different. It might bring us more of that introspective edge. But even if it didn't, it wouldn't matter anyway because, you know, the bangers are there and he's obviously very good at doing those anyway. I mean, we're certainly not short of the bangers here. Bad news, the way he keeps, again, switching up lanes with his flows is really fun to uh, follow along with the, um, you know, the characterful nature of his voice. It's just, uh, it's just what I need. I, I need artists like this that just bring that really fun energy to the table, especially in this genre. He never really opts for those uh, subdued, moody trap bangers that artists like, you know, Lil Baby tend to bring to the table. He just keeps the beat selection fresh and exciting the whole way through even if there are again i mentioned already some of those singing moments that come through um they don't exactly detract from the album much similarly to the closing track which i've already mentioned um trap blues brings some of that singing here as well which isn't something he went for on the first memphis massacre which making me think again you know he's switching things up showing us something a bit different but here he sounds a lot like ty dollar sign i had to check the credits for this album um honestly to see if he actually made uh made it onto it because i was like this has got to be ty dolla sign like he, he's not as on point as ty dolla sign but it just sounded like him cr crazy crazy how he sounded like him here to be honest a weaker version though definitely i mean ty dolla sign can sing really well on his best days but um uh, yeah i don't know the singing here not as exciting as some of the better tracks, but I just appreciate that he's going for it, you know? He's not the best singer, but he actually has moments where he is on his way to sounding really good. We get a Lil Yachty feature on here too. Um, for the Lil Yachty fans out there, you know, this guy isn't always a guy that brings his best for me personally, but he's sounding good on this track, the uh, <laughs> Crunk Ain't Dead Mob track, which I thought was pretty fun. Um, a lot of good features on here, to be fair, as well. Like, um, yeah, it's a fun project. It's fun. I, I, I guess, is it adding anything new to something that, you know, you've probably heard time and time again? No, I don't even know if I'd say it's on par with some of the better trap albums I've heard this year or even the past few years, but it's still really good, to be honest. I think it's hard to come close to the first Memphis Massacre, to be honest, because that, that actually might be like more of like an A out of 10, the more I think about it, because it, it's just bags of fun. But um, the sequels never really rise up to the occasion, do they? Let's be honest. But for what it is, yeah, I'm going to go 7 out of 10. I think if you, again, like any of the artists I've mentioned throughout the video, the comparisons I've made, surely you'd get something out of this. I don't know, trap isn't exactly something a lot of people are accustomed to, but I'm digging more into it, as I've said a few times this year. Like, I'm going further into the genre and finding more and more to like. I think when you know what you're getting with something, you know that you're not going to get great lyrics, you know that's not really the, the point of the, the music, you know that it's going to be fun and energetic, then you can't really argue with what you get when the results sound like this and Juice Ju really is deserving of some attention I think at the moment especially given how he's actually on the quality control music label which um, is a label that has Migos, Lil Yachty who's already been mentioned, Lil Baby, a few other pretty well-known acts in uh, hip-hop right now and um, look I think Memphis Massacre and Memphis Massacre 2 are by far some of the best <laughs> projects coming out of that record label. So yeah, he really is deserving of more attention. So hopefully you check it out. Let me know your thoughts if you've already heard it. Thank you for watching my review. Have a good day and uh, goodbye.